Welcome to the world of World Class Nine Ball, and we bring you two very young guns that turned out to be world beaters. This is an extremely young looking Francisco Sanchez Ruiz about to dine down the nine ball to make it one all in his race with a very young looking Mario Panda He. This is Francesco Ruiz, the kid who turned out to become the current US Open nine ball champion and therewith taking the world rankings number one spot. All right. So, nine balls the game, Mario he to break, and game number three. As you can see, this old school nine ball, you could call it, with the one ball on the spot. So we're probably gonna see players not necessarily cutting the break, but breaking the one ball full on. So he made a ball on the break, one ball didn't end up giving him a chance to run out unless he wants to take the bank on. Could hit the one ball half ball on the right side with a lot of right spin and try to spin towards the orange five and bring the one ball towards the eight. That looks like a fairly natural high percentage shot. Now, did he leave him a slice of that right side one ball? I think he did. And then FSR, as we'll call him from now on, or Francisco, or Fran, as they would call him in Spain, can kind of try to do the same thing. Try to spin his cue ball towards the orange five. Ooh, made that one ball come out way too far. Hit it way too thick. One thing he did do is kind of lock up the three five. So that's the second prize he got out of that safety error. Right, so. It's going to be interesting to to see. I mean, you've probably seen both of these players pray, praying in their current states. Uh, and that's about 10 years later then, or 11 years. And let's we can have a look at their maturity, how that has increased. I think we'll soon be able to see that FSR is going to be playing a bit quicker than he does currently. Um, a bit more rash but already displaying incredible talent. And what a bank shot and clearing of the cluster by Mario He. So now, stunning the cue ball or rolling it with the right spin. Any kind of angle on the five ball would do to make him be able to play position on the green six. That's actually a little bit it's not straight enough, nor does he have enough angle. So he might want to screw it back to where he is now or to the side pocket. Wow. Already displaying a smooth technique. So as you can see, this is from the European Championships in Brandenburg, Germany. With a capacity crowd, I have to say. More than you'd usually see in the EPBF Euro Tour tournaments. So this is European Championship. bit of the wrong angle he might have to follow his cue ball through come off the bottom rail a bit of check side that's nicely done well wow, that's some uh, multi-camera angle work most likely by Kazoom the team of Kazoom that are taking care of the audio and visuals here all right, so we're fast. Nice crowd, love it. So game number four. So look at him hitting the one ball full on. FSR always had a hard break. Boom, there we go. Made the corner ball. And the one ball, well, you'll be able to see. Well, he might actually take, if he's able to see it full ball, he might even try to take on the one five combination, but that is going all in as they would say in a poker terms. So it's not stated here, but it's most likely a, a race to nine. 
So that's what we're racing towards. So what would you do here? It's hard for us to see what he can see exactly. Don't think he can see, don't think he can see the left side of the one ball. Well, went for the combination. Ooh. That's a, a lovely happening there. So now in an excellent position. Thing to note though is Blue 2 to the red 3 is going to require quality, and then the red 3 to the green 6. If he's straight in on the red 3, you should be able to get to the green 6 fairly easily. So this... Is he going to follow his cue ball through to about the height of where the 6 ball is? Or a bit further down, or all the way on the other side? Or oh, chose 3 rail position. I think he actually got away with it and got the potting angle. No, he didn't. No. So, FSR always been quite a hyper kind of player. I think for those who have seen him win the US Open, he's managed to combine a kind of an active and passionate style of play with a mature shot making decision and taking his time these days. As we can see Jasmine Ocean there, and Gerda Hofstetter on the right side of the Austrian team. Yeah, we'll be able to see some uh, elder statesmen of the uh, world of nine ball pool in the audience, I believe. A few of the wheelchair, world-class wheelchair players there in the first row. Kurt the Clerk of Belgium on the left side. Extension. Anyway, what's Mario going to do? Yeah, he wants to play the 6 9 combo, but how to get to the left side of that 6 9 combo? A lot of left spin. Beautifully done. Excellent path of the cue ball. Good speed. Still needs to be made though, there's a lot of ways you can miss this combo, even though it looks fairly straightforward. Mario Heat to take a 3-1 lead, and so he does. Alright. Well, as you can see, the Austrian team clearly, of course, supportive of Mario He. Looking to take a 4-1 lead, and he's breaking, look at the 8 ball, slam. One ball in the side. The 2 ball. is not really potable anywhere. 2-9 combination is not really something you should go for. But then again, the safety. Think along with me, people on the couch, people watching this YouTube link currently. What would you do? Yeah, you could carry on the 2-9 and try to bank the 2 back down table to where he is now, or in between the orange 5 and brown 7. Mm. Yeah, the carom needs a fairly thin hit on the two ball. He has good speed if he gets the two ball to pass the side so it's not potable in there. That worked. FSR can see the two ball though. Now it's not easy to send the two ball into the rail and roll him, snooker him behind the green six. Because I think a full hit will make him, if he can see the two ball full on, Time. a full hit Attention. will make the two ball roll into the rail and hit the six. So he needs to hit the two ball ever so slightly on the left side from where Fran is looking. Oh, I had to curve it slightly. Yeah, and see and hit it full on. And then the two ball hit the rail in the six. Well, didn't give up a clear shot. 
So Mario is going to try to guide the, the cue ball back down behind the 3 9 over two or three rails again, or the 4 9. Needs a bit more speed though, and this is definitely not what he wanted. So, Fran, back to the table after that safety error from Mario. Now, needs a bit of a power shot here. Needs to make this pretty hard and draw his cue ball back at least past the side pocket, like so. Excellent shot there, and straight into ideal line for the rest of his run out. Now, wants to get straight. Or a bit low on the pink four into the bottom right from where we're looking now. I don't think he's going to play the four nine. The run out is easier and higher percentage. All right, so it took the angle the other direction, but then you have to be careful not to run into the nine, as we can see at David Alcady there in the audience. I don't know if you spotted him. Yeah, should be able to with left spin. Oh, see, he wasn't able to avoid the nine. So more quality required on this five ball. Should be able to stun it to the left rail and get position. Wow. Yikes. Still has got a shot on the six in the side, but these thin cuts. I mean, any kind of millimeter adjustment when the balls are so up close makes a lot of difference in where you're sending the object ball. <laughs> yeah, this is going from uh, from bad to worse. But then, if you're a good pro, you're still able to save yourself and to not eventually. I would see Albin Ushin there in the left side of your screen. All right, bank shot. Oh. All right, so disappointment for Fran. Mario with a chance for a 4-1 lead. And I have to say, both players actually 10 years later look exactly the same. <laughs> nice. Mario, such a reliable technique. Or seemingly, anyway, it looks so smooth. And the way he makes the cue ball the way he hits the cue ball, the way he makes place position. All right, slam dunk break. Oh, I love these hard breaks. It's kind of like going back to the Johnny Archer, Earl Strickland times. Really like that when they have to kind of risk pounding the one ball head on. Risk, you know, scratches in the side. A very different era these days with cut breaks and current match room breaking from the box nine on the spot rules interesting though so now what I think he's gonna cut the one ball on the right side leave that there and bring his cue ball see the way he positioned his cue ball now that brown seven and orange five form a wall of course they're far apart but they actually form a fairly wide wall that he created by placing his cue ball there. All right, so. We'll attempt a kick shot, might be able to make it actually, well. Time. I mean, he's not hitting it off the rail, off the other long rail because the four ball is in the way kind of, of where he wants to hit the rail. So this is a bit hard to visualize it's very easy to miss this by a ball's width or more. Ball. All right, so that's safety by Fran. Created the chance for him, and he needs to produce a bit of run out quality here. This rack to take him back to 2 4, but that 4 7 conundrum there. What will he do about that? The three ball is that side of the table, so he could leave an angle about where the orange five is for position on the three and break open that cluster. Or could he get straight in on the pink four and then play the four into the rail, off the seven, into the pocket? As you can see, Albin and Jasmine Ocean in the audience. 
That's great to see all these current heroes of pool. All right. So this is where we'll find out. I mean, if that four ball off the rail, off the seven is possible. Okay. Never mind that. That's perfect. And you could say that's lucky that it rolled it into the side, but it, kind of it's the speed you hit the ball at that gives you a big chance to get that done. All right, so Fran in position to get himself back to a still a 2-4 deficit but on the comeback trail because he will be break is it no it's much going to be mario's break so they were already playing alternate breaks all right fsr Back to 2-4 behind, Mario to break. Now look at the speed they create on the cue ball. Trying to make the corner ball and the one ball in the side. Full on it. Oh, that nine ball slammed into the side. It's like it came in and out. But with four balls on the break. He's got a shot on the two, albeit the most difficult one left on the table. But position on the... Orange five required next. He could achieve that by stunning it into the left corner or just roll it behind the nine. Oh, what a chance to go from, you know, to either make five two or four three. What a big difference. So, didn't leave a shot, so we may see him jump the ball, although I don't know if he can reach the. I don't know if he can reach with the jump cue. Well, he's not even thinking about the jump cue. I mean, it is the... Time. Yeah, there we go. Nice little light jump, but no position on the five unless he wants to thump the five seven combo. Hmm. What would you do here? See if the, the cue ball and the five are in line with the pocket. Safeties are often hard to come by because of that lineup from cue ball, object ball, and pocket. If they're in a straight line, the safety is more often than not hard to come by. Whoa. Hello. Got a shooter here. Yeah, this is a FSR, like a, you know, like a gunslinger from the Wild West. It's amazing to see how ten years down the line, how he matured, was able to kind of contain that hyper pool playingness while still remaining, or while still retaining the passionate play and his focus and his just a drive to, to play the game well and really focused on the game i love his concentration and positivity and what a nice guy he is as well so takes us back to trailing by only one there we have david alcai the team leader of the spain well he's kind of still the leader of the spanish invasion isn't he what a break again both players excellent artists of a full-on explosive break shot he's got the reward wouldn't really want to roll it in the side because his cue ball is going to run into the black eight so he's probably going to choose the corner and stun the cue ball towards us from where we're looking now and yeah and straight away in an ideal line Most of these balls are, the current object ball is, would give him position on the next object ball. So a little angle on the green six, but then fairly straight in on the brown seven, because that leads to an automatic position for the eight, etc. 
So quick work here, and remember, you know, Mario E had that really good break, leading 4-2, shooting the two ball, and a fairly easy rest of the rack for a potential 5-2 lead. Well, didn't take that chance, and here we are, four all. The only thing Mario's got going for him is that he's breaking currently. Boom. We've got an even ball game. Here we go. Game number nine. Should we get to a hill hill situation, it will be Mario breaking, so it may turn out to be important. No balls down. Interesting. A young Albin Ocean there. Whom was then already a talented pool player. But found it hard to uh, leave the shadow of his of his excellent playing younger sister. But how things well didn't necessarily change, but how he proved to be one of the well you know one of the top ten world pool players of the last five years, which is uh, no mean feat. Anyway, back to the performers at hand. What I see is, after the pink four, it wants to be as straight as possible on the orange five, so he can make the orange five and not maneuver his cue ball too far and keep position on the green six. That's his main objective here, and the thing that requires the most quality in this rack. So, can stun this out. I mean, can follow it through. But then you're kind of going away from position and have to achieve position again. Whereas now he already would have a shot on the five, so he would be better off, in essence, drawing it Time. or stunning it. But he's got such little angle. And yeah, that was the way he was able to create the most angle with the follow through. Not as straight as he wanted to be, so we'll always have a. 20 degree angle pot on the green six. Yeah, you can really s drag, slow roll it, as you can see. Yeah, a bit more difficult than you'd want to shoot these balls down the rail. Cue ball will naturally roll towards the nine, so we'll have to add some, either some right spin or some stun to get position on the brown seven. Let's see what he does. Yeah. See, that was a, a tricky kind of shot where your cue ball can't really just roll the six in, can't just stun the six in. It needed kind of like a half stroke to avoid that nine ball. Wow, so what a chance for Fran to go from 4 2 down to taking a 5 4 lead. But in a way, it's beautiful to see with these two young guns how they're kind of, well, how eventually they were able to mature. So that's a great thing. But, you know, at a young age, oh, here we go. Cue ball. Ooh. Oh. I mean, I think he just got there. Or can even slightly jump his cue ball over that right side of the nine ball yeah so it's also good to see how you know as a young player you're sometimes a bit rash but you also combine that with amazing shot making um, extremely hard breaks Mario He takes a 5-4 lead, race to 9, here in Brandenburg, Germany, the 2011 European Pool Championships. Capacity crowd here, a very strong Austrian support on one side of the arena. And he gave himself a shot on the one ball. Pretty handy with this angle, the cue ball travels straight across the table for position on the red 3, so... Kind of only has to play his cue ball with a trace of right side. 
which is kind of you want it the way you would want to make the one ball anyway. So fairly natural. So I'll focus on making this one ball. And there you see it as well. Some or a lot of the Spanish players, quite jumpy players. Um, so while delivering the cue, they sometimes already come up with their bodies or kind of throw their bodies into the shot, which is, you know, rule number one of this beautiful game still is kind of just stand still as still as you can until you kind of see the ball hit the back of the pocket. So we've seen Mario taking a three game lead or two game lead at most. Fran coming back, but now Mario about to take a two game lead, you would imagine. Still all to play for though, even if he were to take a 6-4 lead. He'd be the one breaking as well. So as we were able to see in this era, the one ball was still racked on the spot. But eventually on these new tables, new cloth, the players got too good at making the corner ball disappear. And so eventually they decided to move the rack up two balls widths. So the nine ball got racked on the middle diamond spot. And the one ball, two balls higher there with. So it became higher, or harder to make the corner ball, and that's how we started to develop the cut break to make the corner ball. But here, still a full hit, loving it. Explosion, here we go. Corner ball made. If you don't make the one ball in the side, that would still travel towards that corner if you're breaking from the side that both Fran and Mario are breaking from. But I don't think he's got the pot though. Is he able to bank the one back down table and hide his cue ball behind the orange? The rest of the rack very open. So it's all about the battle for Time. control of the one ball. Extension. That will most likely decide the fate of this rack. Yeah, I think he can bank the one. Especially if you give the cue ball a bit of left side, then the one ball will bank a little bit to the right avoid all right that's the way to do it he really stuck him against the two ball now did he hide this south long rail natural escape route i think he did yeah he hooked him so well against the blue two that that's the way you want to go to really avoid fran hitting the natural escape route now is forced to go well <laughs> what do you see here viewers Time. one rail escape but that's really hard we'll be bridging over the two ball with a lot of elevation on the cue it's very hard to hit the cue ball exactly in the center this would be an almighty escape if he hits this even never mind getting away with it but talent often comes to the fore in these situations. The hit is clear. Yeah, so good safety by Mario. Now can he convert this self-created chance to take a 7-4 lead? By the way, let us know where you're watching this from. We'd love to know your location. And uh, we'd also love to hear any thoughts you may have and also we are always interested in you telling us which players you'd like to see featured here on the billiard network which must by now be the youtube channel with the widest array of world-class pool matches of all kinds of disciplines don't snooker yourself on the blue too oh make the brown seven first of all So both players displaying exquisite raw talent, but that raw talent then also is usually combined with sometimes schoolboy errors. A 
like this one you know and but it's amazing to see how both players 10 years later are still playing not in just the top of the european tiers but actually have become well you know francisco currently the world number one ranked player amazing feat mario still waiting for his first major win breakthrough is of course after this tournament Oh, what a beautiful kick. He's gone on to win a few Euro Tours. He really has no problem in that scene. He hasn't managed yet to win a big matchroom tournament or a big major, whereas FSR has. So, but what a beautiful kick shot that was. Kick shot, kick and stick with the cue ball. And then sending the two ball. Here we go. Air Ruiz. Well, that will do just fine, won't it? Wow. Oh, I think someone called a foul. Ooh, I, would have loved to see. I think maybe Fran front actually owned up to him for himself. Maybe he hit some kind of ball. Be nice to see the replay, please. Either way, what a difference. I mean... It would have been Mario kicking at a very difficult two ball to hit. And then Fran with a chance to take it back to 6-5 most likely. And now... Which should be... Excuse me. Should be a 7-4 lead for Mario Panda He. Is that a derogatory nickname? I mean, it is what they call him. I don't know. All right. Yeah, so a nice bit of bottom right stun will bring us, draw us cue ball past this cross side. We're fairly straight in position on the nine ball. Drew it back ever so slightly too far, so a bit of quality required on this 9 ball, but I expect Mario to down this and take the 7-4 lead. Race to 9. Here we go. Brown 7, right corner pocket. Boom. I mean, it's hard to even track it. It went in so quickly. Got the shot on the 1 ball. Should be able to hold position on the blue two. I mean, look at the three, four, the six, the eight. So a slow roll on this one ball, which is sometimes not easy to do because you don't want to just count on the table not rolling off, but he really wants his cue ball to roll as little up rail, up table as possible. Yeah. Of course, the three balls already hanging over the pocket. In making this blue two at this angle, your cue ball will always travel straight into the rail and back up table. Is he going to use the green six to stop his cue ball? No. Ooh, careful now that you don't. Wow, he almost hooked himself behind the four ball. I think you can see the the right side that is re required to make the three in, in the corner pocket. Of course, position is automatic with the four ball hanging over the side pocket. Yeah, it doesn't really matter where it's, unless it sticks to the four ball. Yeah. Right, so this is all connected dots, meaning the pink gives you position on the four, six. So keep a straight six. The six gives you position on the eight, so keep a fairly straight in position on the eight, uh, sorry, the six. And the eight kind of gives you position on the nine ball. So little angles, little to no angles required on any of these last four balls. And then we might still see a comeback. I'm pretty certain the last story has not been written in this match yet. 
All right, so 7-5. This score. Mario to break. Three ball, corner pocket. Ooh, didn't make that. Made the one ball. Made the nine ball fly. I mean, there's too much to talk about with these hard, explosive breaks. The old school, full-on one ball hits. I'm loving it. Push out. No view on the one ball, so we're going to see a push out here. It's hard to do a nine ball, if, but if you could sometimes create a cluster with the push out, it would be handy to lengthen the game, to not just let it be a battle for the one ball and thereafter it'd be a most likely run out if you create a cluster. Then you can kind of, you may lose the battle for the one ball, but then there might still be another cluster down the line which will give you another chance at the table. What would you do here? Would you take it? Nah. The only thing you can do is kind of bank the one, but that doesn't really give you position on the three. Thin the one ball. Poof. Bring the cue ball back to the left corner pocket. All right, so he went for the bank. Missed it by some way. Yeah, I don't know if that was the most mature push out. six combo but that doesn't really give you much future position on the one the one seven combo so it will be a safety cutting the one either side maybe try to bring it to here that was the most natural easy way to get a result and so he did Yeah. In order to reach the point where he pointed with his cue, we'll have to swerve the cue ball ever so slightly. So, bottom left spin, mini swerve. He was actually trying to make the one ball. Not a bad result, but he should find himself in a pretty tricky snooker when he comes back to the table, Mario, that is. Either bank the one towards the orange five, and you use the four, six, seven as a blocker. I think that's what he's trying to do. Ooh, careful. Oh, he's lucky if he snookers him behind the three, but I don't think he did. Or I think he actually did. Yeah, he did. Wow. Jump. It's going to be hard to uh, get the cue ball to to jump so high that it clears the three ball at such a short distance. I mean, these days they do have jump cues that make that achievable. But... All right, so twisting and turning this race to nine, nine ball from 2011. I mean, it depends when you're watching this, but I'm currently commentating in the year 2022. It's so cool to see both Mario He and FSR at such a young age playing at the top level of the European Championships and to see their progress that they made in the 10 years since is uh, quite remarkable. You know, there are a lot of players that sometimes show the promise that both these players have showed, but then throughout the coming years kind of uh, don't don't necessarily stay with the top of the European elite but these two players not only did they stay part of the European elite they became part of the world nine ball elite which is a, a beautiful achievement so FSR what would you do here bank the five he looks like he's in attacking mode narrowly missed the bank did miss it on the professional side so missed it by banking it too straight 
and therefore the five ball rolled back into a fairly safe position. What could he do here? How to use the six seven as a blocker? It's not easy. I mean, if you bring the cue ball behind the six seven, it almost doesn't matter where the five ball goes. Oh, he went for the attack. Well, not a bad result. So the bank is on into the corner that he's bridging over. Mm, otherwise, again, very difficult to bring your cue ball to use that 6 7 as a wall of balls or to bring the 5 there. Could split the balls and not necessarily go for the snooker. Yeah, he went for the bank. And that's not good enough. I mean, theoretically cuttable. This cue ball will naturally come straight off the cushion and hit the right side of the eight ball, which is will then make the cue ball go towards the right side of the table, which doesn't help. To avoid hitting the 8, you're going to have to shoot it with a lot of right spin or roll it. So he's going to try full contact on the black. Boom. Beautiful shot. Wow. To hit a ball so hard and make it stop dead on the 8 ball, that's hard to do a second time. But if you do it when it matters, beautiful. So looking to take an 8-5 lead. That's a look of disbelief, if ever I've seen any. Wow. It's like he wants FSR to come back into the match. And if you, you know, if you don't take your chances, soon your opponent will surpass you. Any kind of angle on the black would make his cue ball maneuverable towards the nine. Top right spin. Yeah. A bit more angle on the nine ball than he needed, but these two players extreme potting talents. And really have got a good eye for an angle on a pot. Uh, oh, seven six. Lose the boot could make it an even ball game without Mario even getting a look in. One ball down, corner ball down, looking for the three ball. He's got a shot into the side. Cue ball will roll two rails towards the green six. Hard to avoid hitting that. Although if you hit it, you might still get a shot on the pink four. Ooh, didn't even go for it. Okay, maybe the cut was a lot thinner than I imagined. Thing is though, with Mario kicking at this three ball, I mean, you know, you'd put your money on him hitting the three ball. And with all kinds of balls spread all over the table, you know, he might easily get away with it, either not leaving a pot for Ruiz, or might even snooker him back. Ball. Unless you don't hit the ball you're aiming for. Right, so that's safety and patience shown by Ruiz. Got him a ball in hand to tie the game up at seven apiece. Three, sorry, four to five needs a bit of travel. Five to six needs a bit of travel thereafter. Should be able to keep it pretty simple. So angles required on the five ball and on the four ball currently. That might 
end up, that's not an angle. I mean, that's about as straight as he could have been. You know, he may actually choose to hit the rail first and make the five ball and therewith creating the, you know, 40 degree angle so that his cue ball can travel after hitting the five. And I think he's going to draw it back bottom left spin with a lot of, with a lot of speed. Time. Extension. Kind of with the speed he's going to hit it at, it's going to stun the cue ball into the short rail and create the angle and then let the bottom right spin take. Where is he looking at the rail first now? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, looking at the rail first, but the position on the six, far from guaranteed. Oh. He's going to rue his missed chances, Ruiz will. So does the six ball, well it doesn't necessarily have to pass the seven, you can always play the six eight combination. Not a foregone conclusion to bring your cue ball back that side of the table after making this five. Well, if you have cue power and accuracy like that, it made that look very easy. When he makes the 6 8, his cue ball will come back up table and should be able to hold position for the 6. Bit of a touchy shot though, because his 6, as you can see, needs to hit the 8 ball, half ball or less, to make it. So that might travel further than he wants. And there. That's why he hit it harder. Excellent control of the cue ball and the 6 ball. Ooh, what a chance Ruiz had to tie it up seven apiece. He's had a few of those chances, hasn't he? And also Mario's had chances to run away to a, a three-game lead and kind of went wrong somewhere along the line then. Good match for us to watch, though, with explosive breaks. Talented ball striking, but also the odd young gun mistake here and there. Which is pretty refreshing to see. And that's 8 6 is lead. And the Austrian crowd, or the Austrian side of the crowd approved. Beautiful break. Corner ball made, one ball down. Looking at the two ball. Got a shot. Right, so what a chance to run out this game and take victory. Beautiful. So the sixth to the seven requires a specific angle needs about a 20 to 40 degree angle on the seven ball to make his cue ball maneuverable to the eight ball so that's what he's working towards now that's good should be able to play a stop shot on the five ball i think or can stun it to shoot at six in the same side yeah and so he did So these two next angles require more quality than the first three balls of this run out. When you achieve it, it looks pretty effortless, but if you don't achieve it, as FSR found out by landing on straight on that five ball. So both these shots need a 20 to 40 degree angle. Beautiful. Now he did had the same shot on the eight ball and then overdrew his cue ball, remember, in one or two games ago. So we will probably learn from that and apply a bit less draw. Very good. A bit of a nervy shot on the eight there, a bit of movement. This for the win. Mario he 
defeating FSR at a very young age. There we go. Thanks for watching the Billiard Network. Do check out our library for amazing matches. I'm in group of bits. See you all later. Thank you.